the most powerful way that you can begin today to change your life and make it better is by training your mind. That's what we're talking about in this video, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Crystal Ann Compton and I am an intuitive as well as a spiritual channel. And I especially wanna say hello to anybody new to me, new to this video, new to this channel, welcome. And if you'd be so inclined, please subscribe. I'd like to stay connected. In this video, we're gonna be talking about mind training and learning how to bring the brain, the ego, the narratives into submission submitting to the higher calling, the higher vibration, and the higher self. Because if we're not careful, the brain, the thoughts, the narratives can lead us way astray, off our path, and in fact, derail us entirely. We have to always remember, don't we, that thoughts have a substance. Thoughts are things. And thoughts are actually the precursor, the thing that comes before something beginning to materialize or manifest. The thought, the thinking, the mind is incredibly powerful. It creates everything that we experience. And so if we are unhappy, if we're depressed, if we're sick chronically, if we're having problem after problem after problem, then we must stop and examine what's happening in our thinking and what's happening in the mind. Now, one of the first ways that we can begin to bring the mind into submission to the higher self and to the spirit is to know in the first place what it's actually saying to us. We don't listen, do we, <laughs> to what we're actually saying to ourselves about ourselves, much less what we're saying within ourselves about other people or the world or our experiences. We're not paying attention to it. Never forget the body, the physical instrument. Here's the thinking happening in the mind. Everything is synergistic, okay? So it hears it, but it takes what it hears as a directive. This means it takes it as instruction. So if you're constantly saying to yourself, I'm tired, I'm so tired of this. I'm sick, oh God, I feel terrible, oh my gosh, am I fat, I'm ugly, why do, why, or I'm unlovable. Whatever you're saying in the background of your life, your body is not just hearing it, but it's saying, oh, okay, let me manifest that in the condition of the physical. That's the first reason you need to know what you're saying in your brain. But beyond even that, keeping in mind that the thought is the first part of the manifestation formula. It is the magical substance out of which we create our reality. Keeping that in mind and knowing that that's true, why aren't we paying attention to what we're saying? We have to learn how to pay attention to everything we're thinking. Now, my first recommendation to do that is to teach yourself how to pay attention. Teach yourself how to pop out of this experience in this moment into what I call the observer position, which is an aspect of the higher self that is able to look at the life and look at the things that we're doing and thinking with supreme neutrality, total non-judgment, just keeping a record of what you're thinking. It's for informational purposes. I, I tell people, I tell my students, set your smartphone alarm, set an alarm of some kind to go off I don't know, 10, maybe 12 times a day. And when it goes off, stop a moment, stop what you're doing, stop what you're in the middle of, and think about what you were just thinking. Sift through all of it, like measure it. What were you just thinking? Was it good? Was it bad? How do you feel right now? Knowing that thoughts come before feelings and that feelings are a product of the thought. Are you feeling bad? Okay, that's your first hint that you were thinking something negative or low vibration. Teach yourself to check in with yourself and observe what you're actually thinking. The next thing I want you to learn how to do is upon recognizing that the way that you're talking to yourself or the things that you're saying are negative, therefore creating a negative reality or circumstance. 
Upon seeing this, teach yourself to supplant the negative with the positive. Now, here's what I like to do. This takes some time, but when I notice that I'm saying something poisonous to myself, and I do, these are ancient scripts, man, from my childhood, and they pop up every now and again. And when I observe it, I stop. I take a breath, breathing in a couple of times, four seconds in through the nose, hold it seven seconds, and then eight seconds out of the mouth trances you very quickly. And when we are altered a little bit, we are extremely receptive. When we're receptive, we can hear the voice of spirit. And so that's what I do. I take a few of those breaths after I've noticed the negative thought. And then I ask myself and I ask spirit to show me, what is that thought connected to? Is it connected to something my dad said to me 40 years ago? Is it connected to something that has happened to me? It is, is it connected to a belief system that I've been walking around with that might be false? What's it connected to? If you do the work and you're conscious and intentional about it, this will be revealed to you. You can follow the negative thought. It has a thread attached to it all the way to the pattern that you're running. And you can examine the pattern and see where it originates. Maybe it was my father. Maybe I was seven years old the first time he told me I was ugly or that I was worthless or that I children should be seen and not heard. Maybe this negative thought is a byproduct of something that happened all those years ago. I've identified it and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna love the me that felt the need to think that. I'm gonna love Crystal Ann Compton at seven years old who was told these things that programmed her ultimately. I'm gonna love the me that's been running this weird script from time to time in the back of my awareness who felt the need to have this present in the awareness. I'm gonna love the me that I am right now who has the enlightenment and consciousness and awareness to understand why it's happening. I'm not gonna be mad that I'm thinking negative thoughts. I'm not gonna be upset that I'm not farther along in progress than I am right now. I'm just gonna be grateful. Thank you, God, for showing that to me. Thank you, Spirit, for revealing where this comes from. And thank you, seven-year-old Crystal, Thank you. Thank you so much for revealing this to me. And then when you can get into that space of love, when you can see who it is that you are and who you were, when you were programmed with that negative thought, that's when you can actually get into the heart energy. You can turn on your heart light, if you will. You can learn to love. You can try to tap into the energy of your innocent self and you can let the love for yourself grow. It's this positive thing that happens. It truly is a vibration. When we connect with our innocent self, we connect with our wounded self. We don't stay there for a very long time. Suffering is optional, but we identify where it comes from and we love ourselves. We let that love for ourselves grow. And when we feel the love in our body, truly physically, in our heart, that's when we consciously release it. We release the negative thought. We release the identified pattern and we release the crystal who was still bound up in that pattern since the age of seven. We love her, we release her. And then as this begins to fall away, that's when we supplant what was negatively spoken in the narratives or what was being programmed into us with something positive. Typically, the best thing to do is to say something that is directly oppositional to what you were just saying to yourself that was negative. So if you're just saying to yourself, God, nobody ever likes me, I am unlovable, or something of that nature, you would say something like, I am a child of God, and God is love, and I have access to infinite resources of love. I am love. I live love. You can say something like that and immediately undo or dismantle the negative thought. The more you learn to do this, the more you patrol your mind and what the ego says and what the monkey mind is constantly parroting, the more you catch yourself in the negativity and the more you identify the pattern and release the pattern and supplant it with the positive, the more you bring the mind into submission to the spirit, the body, 
is an animal. The mind is part of the animal, but the mind has more power over the body. The mind can make the body do what the mind wants it to do. You can do miraculous things when you've got your mind set to it. But even more powerful than the mind is the spirit, is the high vibration, and indeed is the higher self, which is where our consciousness originates. It doesn't originate in the brain. It's not originating from our mind. It's non-local. It's with the higher self. And it's even more powerful than the powerful mind. So when you've got your mind in control, when you're training and working with your mind, now you have possession of the most powerful tool that will truly help you to design and master and manipulate and commandeer the experience that you have in this incarnation. Get control of the mind and control your reality. That's how it works. Thank you.